This is Breeze Audio TPA 3116 mini power amplifier that I got for $24 off of uh, AliExpress, I think. I've been trying to shoot a proper, proper automated review of this thing for about an hour and I can't seem to make it go quite right. So let's just have a little play around with it since I've just uh, hooked it up to all my test gear anyway. So, but I like this amp because it's a uh, TPA 3116 based, really cheap and uh, you can run it off of a standard issue 19 volt laptop power adapter. This is some 90 watts job I used to have with my uh, HP. And uh, let's just see what this thing does. So we've got the normal test setup 48482 dummy load, uh, HP 39A distortion meter, and we've got scope up there. So let's just crank this thing and see what it does. I've tried measuring the noise for a bit, I haven't gotten anything really good out of it, but anyway, let's just. Do the output power? It's been running a bit warm now, so it might be on the virtue of uh, overheating like these things tend to do. It's so at 4 ohms right now, 3% distortion, full scale. Uh, looking at the right channels, so let's see. It's been doing just about 12 volts. I know, yeah, the, the uh, right channel of this thing is actually a bit weird. It's going into this weird, like it, all of a sudden it seems to be going into overcurrent protection mode or something. You can see the distortion waveform, the jagged thing is just jumping up there at a very specific point. And it's not hard clipping. And if we switch to the other channel it does that as well, but not nearly as dramatically. It just kind of seems to start clipping a little like a normal amplifier. Yeah, so that's weird differences between channels. That makes me think that this thing probably doesn't have a genuine TPA 3116 in it because that yeah that doesn't look very very nice at all actually. But yeah let's uh, do uh, output power on the uh, better channel. Uh, so we're at a three percent full scale, let's just crank it till clips of that one. Yeah that should be a good channel. 1 kilohertz test tone and we're getting yeah just about 12 volts for 1% and into 4 ohms that's uh, just over 35 watts, about 37 or so and it does about the same on both channels except the bad channel just gives you uh, quite a bit more distortion of the same power level, we're at about 2% uh, for that channel, and if we turn it down, it just yeah, it's pretty similar to around the one percent mark. But if we lower the distortion scale, now we're at one percent full scale. Ah, it's not turning out too bad, but I think it kind of just never goes far below one percent. Yeah, just jumped from 0.1 to about 1% distortion there at around 9 volts. So that's uh, about 20 watts. So it's starting to do something funny at about 20 watts on one of the channels. So if you ever want in better shape, let's do the 8 ohm, since uh, that's where you're going to see the biggest gains uh, over a 12 volt power supply, like the Leapi, uh, because uh, you've got the higher supply voltage, so it's probably going to do about the same. Yeah, it starts clipping just at around 13 volts or so into 8 ohms, and that's uh, that is about 21 watts. So, uh, while it's working properly, it's about 20 watts per channel, this thing in practice, and that's really not too bad into 8 ohms. Uh, if you compare it to the Li Pi, that's, uh, you know, 6 watts per channel into 8 ohms, so this thing certainly has a bit more grunt to it, a lot more grunt to it, and j that's just running off of a generic laptop power supply. You could run this thing off over up to 24 volts, pretty much, and uh, it would be working quite well. So let's just uh, take this thing apart quickly and have a little look at how the insides go. And that's the inside right there, so the top of the lid just uh, comes off with a couple of screws front and back, hex head in front, uh, Phillips in back, pretty high quality screw screws it seems. And uh, this is the inside, so we've got uh, a pretty basic setup with uh, some very fake Sanyo ca caps here and 
the undersized heatsink. It is currently on the load, so let's just uh, quickly have a check at the temperature of that thing. I'm not certain. Yeah, that's running hot. Even into 8 ohms is running a bit too hot. Uh, if we switch it to 4 ohms, quadruple the power dissipation, it's just gonna probably start climbing pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. And that's an open air too. So if you load this thing down a lot, these little tiny caps of air are gonna take a bit of a beating. And this thing is going to go into over temperature protection at any moment now. Uh, I do really like these uh, speaker plugs they've got because uh, not only do uh, they screw terminals, but they actually fit banana plugs, normal 4mm banana plugs in the rear. So it's really quick to just uh, connect everything up. And uh, yeah, it's very minimalistic. I haven't. Uh, checked the amount of output noise that's coming out of this thing yet uh, <laughs> uh, that's running way too hot is, does this thing even have over temperature protection because it's still putting out just fine if it doesn't have over temperature protection it's a bit interesting because I've got these which also came from AliExpress at some stage and uh, I ordered these at the same time, but I had no idea that they would fit the same case, because that's a pretty good fit right there. So from the research I've done, it seems that this case is a kind of a, a case you can just uh, buy from random retailers in China, and uh, they make amps for it. So these boards are obviously a bit different. I think this one is a dual, I think both of these are dual TPA3116. Yeah, where they just run one of them with two channels in parallel because you've got uh, six output coils yeah, and uh, one of the channels is slightly beefier than the other and these are supposed to be 2.1 so I'm gonna check these out at some stage but haven't had the uh, interest to do it yet this one looks pretty similar to the one inside the board right now in fact it also has a bunch of caps on the underside I have had this board 8 for a moment and on the underside there's nothing except for a few caps. So you, all the circuitry has real simple, you've just got the input going straight into the coupling caps of the TPA3116 through the volume potentiometer and that's that. And this thing is still putting out although the distortion has risen to yeah, about half a percent. I'm actually starting to wonder whether or not this thing has any over temperature protection. 115 degrees. I'm just going to let it run. <laughs> the potentiometer, it seems to be of a higher quality than the normal China specials you get. Uh, seems very similar to my, the green ones I've ordered. Uh, I've got a few of these there. Uh, the, these are some pretty big manufacturer. They're not boards or anything like that, but they are quality devices. Uh, yeah, these are probably Chinese, a Chinese copy because they don't look in identical by any means. But it still looks better than the one you get in the Li Pi. Definitely. I don't want to know how hot the actual die is in there. 120 degrees at the heatsink. <laughs> Another kind of weird thing they've done with this amplifier is uh, when you turn it off, the power LED actually doesn't go off, it just goes dim. And it's so bright in here you probably can't see it, but that LED is not off, and the amplifier has a relatively high idle consumption uh, when it's just sitting powered off. I think it was, I measured it at some stage at debate. 10 milliamps or so, which I would think it's more than is required to make that LED light up like that, so I'm not certain they actually turn the power off in this thing. Uh, the power switch is obviously not in series with the power rail, because of that, that seems to be the only trace running to it, and it's way too thin. So, 
It's starting to smell a bit of burnt in around here. <laughs> so I, I wager that uh, this switch either puts the chip in standby, but it seems to turn on too quickly for that. So uh, I'm almost suspecting that they're just uh, putting the chip in mute in order to uh, turn it off, in quote marks. So uh, that, that's a bit uh, bad because you know you have it's a, it's an extra idle consumption when you turn it off. You'd think you'd turned it off, but that's not entirely true. But I haven't. Ouch! I'm I'm getting burnt of this thing now. I haven't actually checked it out too much in depth. 130 degrees. I'm pretty sure this thing just doesn't have any thermal protection up by this stage. Let's just to turn it on higher. I'm drawing 140 watts from the grid right now. Clipping pretty hard. The junction temperature has to be approaching 200 degrees by now, Jesus. It started tick. Uh, it did a tick. Yeah. It's ticking. It is ticking, so it does have over temperature protection. At what? Yeah, that, that has to be trimmed for like. 175 degrees, something like that. Jesus. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. I'm kind of uh, disappointed that they haven't uh, heat synced the chip to the case because it's, you know, a pretty hefty aluminium case and even from the bad thermal coupling we've got, it's getting a bit warm. And uh, with a heat sink like this, you're just going to heat up the air inside the case. And the outside of the case is not going to be anywhere near as hot as the heating. Wow, that's so hot I've turned it off. So what's the uh, noise floor like here uh, when we're just uh, really hot? The hotter your 8-bit stage is, the higher your noise floor is going to be. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty okay actually. We've got 1 millivolt full scale, so this is about... Uh, 200 microvolts, it's pulsing something as it's cooling down, probably. And that's like minus 74 dBV, so that's about the same as the Lee Pine Company. And they could be doing worse. I know if you put these in the really high gain mode, they're, they're, they're just gonna have very, very high noise floors. Let's just check the gain while we're at it. Let's just adjust our oscillator level to... Let's do 1 volt oscillator level. Now that's probably too high actually. Let's do yeah, half a volt. Alright, so with half a volt there, let's just put the volume to the max and that, yeah, that makes us clip. So we want to uh, less than 1 volt. Let's... Uh, Let's do something where it's not clipping at max volume. Let's do 0 0.1 volts. 100 millivolts. There we go, 100 millivolts going in. Volume at maximum, so let's uh, uh, see what we get. So that's at zero, and each step on this knob puts us uh, 10 decibels up. So we've got 10, 20, 30. We've got uh, 40 minus uh, 9 decibels, so that's uh, 31 decibels of gain, which is uh, quite high, actually. I think that might be the highest gain setting. So you could probably improve the noise floor by lowering the gain setting using one of the resistors on the board. Mm -hmm. Oh well. I just wanted to show you this amplifier off and... Well... It seems that it's at least got uh, film protection. Cheerio. And yeah, let's uh, check the out of band noise. It should be somewhere around 400 kilohertz on these. And I'm starting to get something there. Some really high frequency stuff there, but that big wave is going to be the main switching frequency. And well, this finished the channel, we've got to. What about a millivolt? Just around a millivolt? That's it. 
do the acquirement new simple no uh, acquire average for the two averages here there we go yeah but a millivolt that's not too bad I've certainly seen worse out of these charn apps like that uh, one nightmare one I had it look at so this could be a lot worse a lot worse indeed uh, the high frequency stuff, really high frequency stuff, is going to be what? Yeah, what's that peaking at? 2 millivolts. Not too bad. Pretty okay. Cheerio.